guys, welcome back. Ready for another color? We're going to do the next color in the CMW workbook, and that's going to be Artichoke, and it's PC1098. If you have your PDF, it's pages 12 through 14. If you're working out of the master sheets, you're going to put, do not write on your master sheets, you're going to put in 1098 slash artichoke. Color in with the pencil. It should be the third one in. Before I even start going through the colors with you, I have to talk about this color because it's a strange one. I have absolutely no idea why they put it where they did in the color scheme in the Prismacolor box. It's a weird place because it's it's completely out of place and it might throw some people. Now the first colors are cream and ginger root and you sort of kind of get the correlation between these three but then they go straight into the artichoke and artichoke is really going over the top. The ginger root is very closely related to cream with a little bit of green in it. But artichoke has got a lot of yellow in it. And I realize it's coming through the yellows, but it's got a lot of yellow in it and it's definitely in the green. So it's darker than the eggshell and the deco and the lemon. It's in a weird place because it should actually be way down near the greens when it comes to the color wheel. Um, it, would sh it should be somewhere in here. Now, if you look at green okra, they're very similar. So I didn't know, I have no idea why they didn't just stick it right next to green okra. Um, and it, it, it's going to have a, a similarity to a couple of other things, and we'll go through that when we go through the colors. Okay, now how do you make artichoke, the color? If you were making it with paint, you'd pretty much use four parts yellow, one part leafy green, and a smidge of black, a little dollop of black. And that's how you would get this color. So in thinking of what this color is made of, but that's dealing with paint. We as pencil artists don't have the opportunity to mix and match in parts because it's pencil. All we could do is layers, heavy layer, light layer. We don't have that opportunity to, to mix and blend everything as well as paint. So we have to rely on what Prismacolor produces or one of the other brands produce as far as being the color. And that's what makes it a little harder. So we're going to use Artichoke. They created artichoke for us. They mixed the three parts yellow, the one part green, and a smidge of black. Now, as far as the polychromos blend look alike for this, it's going to be one of those pencils that there is no exact match for. You have one for like burnt umber. You have one for um, sandbar brown, bronze, but there is no artichoke it's kind of one of those that's going to just stand out there and if you, if you don't have it and you really want this color you can always go to blix or ebay or amazon and purchase the color the actual color from prismacolor they do sell this in stock so the first thing i want to show you guys when it comes to artichoke now first of all with the artichoke being a green and a yellow mixed together with a little bit of black in it, you have to remember what that's going to react to. The greens are a secondary color, so you have to be careful that you don't turn it into mud. But it does create a very nice mossy green depending on what colors it's mixed in with. This week, you guys know I was sick. I still am sick. 
I did try before I was ready to color. I did try coloring. And let me tell you, I created the worst color I have ever created in my life using artichoke. <laughs> I don't know where my brain was. I was just feeling lousy and I was just picking up pencils without thinking. And I mixed the most horrendous pencil. I almost tore the page out of my book. It was that bad. And I'll show it to you when I get to that part of this. But it was awful. So this color you have to be careful with. It's going to mix with certain things and it's going to make really bad color with other things. So let's start going through it and we'll, we'll get to where the problems are and why the problems exist. Now at the top of the chart, when we're going down, you have a lot of double greens. Now remember if you were here last week, it's in the corner of my video now, the chart and what it means. So if it has two green lights, it's good for blending, it's good for palettes. If it has two red, it's not good for either one. And then depending on whether it's green or red will be whether it's good for either a palette or a blend, but maybe not for both. So you could see we have an array of different things on this page. Instead of doing the triple blends in this video, I'm going to give you my top picks. I was asked to do that. Um, and it does make a little bit more sense and it's easier for me because I've been creating a lot more triple blends in the demonstration videos than I can on here. I'm going to talk more and make it more prevalent what my top picks for this color is and people can jot them down. We're looking at your cream, your ginger root, and your artichoke. They all double green. They're fine. They mix. They match. They look great together. Now you're starting to get into your yellows and you really are a green light through the yellows going into the yellowed oranges. Where your problem starts is once it starts getting into the oranges, remember that orange and green make mud. But with the lighter oranges, okay, it's not such a bad mud. You can, this, this color you would see in a pumpkin, you would see in a fall, um, and it looks very pretty together. And you can do a little bit of a blend where it's not going to get horrible. Where that blend started to getting darker was as it started getting into the more reds. And you got your, um, where these were okay as a palette, you really shouldn't blend them. They're not good blends. And why you can butt them up next to each other, look at what, look in the, in the center on what they create. It's too much of this is going to ruin your picture. So try to stay away from the blending and you just keep it as the uh, palette color because then it's, it's really fine because red and green are your Christmas colors and you've got your orange and your green as your, your fall colors. So you're safe. As we get into the reds and the pinks, you really are going to see that it doesn't blend at all. But remember, it's a nature color, so you're going to see it in a palette. This is why artichoke is one of my favorite colors. It really does a picture well. It's a grape leaf color. It's a turning of the fall colors color. Um, it could be coming out of, it could be coming off of a rock as moss color. I use this for all my nature pictures at, at least once or twice in the picture. But you really want to not blend these. You're not going to see the pink blended with this. So you're going to try to keep it away from the reds, away from the pinks. Then you're going to start going into some of the lighter peachy colors and the beige. And that's where it kind of changes again. I actually do like the, the light peach blend that it creates here. And why does it do that? Because it's going to dominate over the color. So it's going to be mostly like this. But the secondary color in this is not going to affect it. Now, if you look at the peach, the peach has got yellow in it. 
So the predominant color in the artichoke is yellow. It's three parts. You have to think of it three parts yellow, one part green, one part black. But the peach also has the yellow in it. So you're probably going to get, and you not probably, you really do get a nice shaded color when you have the deco peach, the light peach, the peach beige seashell. You could see this as um, seaweed. Then all of a sudden you hit the salmon and the salmon starts to get pinky again and it really not the greatest. I don't even like the blend, but it's going to be, a, it, I don't like the palette, but it is a matter of tastes. I mean, some people might like the palette. So it's not going to ruin your picture, but it's not the best. In my eyes, it's not the best. So I did give it a, a plus for the palette, considering taste. I liked the beige with it. it. I thought that looked very nice. This was just too bright. And then we have the peachy color, which not a great blend, but it kind of looks okay together. But as we get into some of the beige browns, it started to look good over here with the clay rose as a blend. It blended nicely together. But if you really look at this palette together, like this is dull. I mean, I don't know how many people are going to jump up and down and say, oh, I want that on my picture. This is something I really need. It's it's a do-nothing combination. So I stopped you um, on the rosy beige, the clay rose, and the beige sienna, where they do blend, not so pretty. All of a sudden, you get to the chestnut. The chestnut darkens up quite a bit. And I want you to know this is one of my favorite picks for this color. I use this combination all the time in ground cover. One of my favorite, part of my, one of what I use as a standard color. And then you start to get into your purples. Purple and green do not mix. So the color that they're creating, which you can kind of see in here, isn't very pretty. Where it it's okay just like the reds where it's like a flower color so your palette is okay if it's your taste but the blended color which is right there it's not very pretty um or special that you would choose that before i get into the blues and why this color works or doesn't work with the blues i want to give you another perspective on this color Remember, back in the day, and now I'm talking, we're going back to Leonardo da Vinci. All of the great masters studied under another master who was above them. If you got an internship or a mastership, whatever they called it back then, you were among the lucky if you got to study with one of the greats. And before they would even let you touch a brush to a canvas, you had to learn how to make the paint. They didn't have blicks. You didn't go to the corner and pick up paint. You you actually went out there and became a chemist. So here we have, so here we're going to break it down even further. Okay. Now on the color wheel, there's only three colors. Every one of these colors could be created by mixing blue, yellow, and red, the three primary colors. Then you have your secondary colors and your tertiary colors. So here we have a primary color, and that's blue. Now, some of the blues are going to work with this because why? Because this has green in it, green and yellow. Yellow and blue make green. So you're going to have a lot of these that work well together and some of them that really flop. So let's start talking about the blues. First of all, you're going to have a good color palette almost 90% of the time. I, the gray green, that's starting really into the grays, but you have a lot of these colors that you could see all of the colors look good in the palette. And that's because blue and yellow make green. Okay. They're analogous. They sit next to each other on the color wheel. Analogous colors always look good together. When they blend, some of them blend better than others. Now, 
china blue and and these colors so here we have well your purples that didn't go and then you start going into your blue violet and I thought that was an awful mix both palette wise this kind of just reminds me of drab pottery didn't it didn't do anything for me then the colors start to get more vibrant and more blue and as they get bluer they start to work a little bit better. So here you don't have a great blending because the blue is really overpowering this color. So the blend that you're going to get is really going to be dark and really nothing to it. You're not going to get any sort of great change because there's just not enough of the yellow to turn any sort of bright green in there. We have a couple of colors that do not blend well. The denim blue... Uh, true blue doesn't do much. If you can look right in there when you're doing your color palettes, it's not a great blend, but it does look good as a palette. Same with the sky blue light. On here, I have it doesn't blend well because it really doesn't make a very pretty blend. But I kind of like the two of these colors together. And I could see some sort of um, ocean in this where you would have a palette that is with the sky blue light. Going through your light um, cerulean blue, it it started to green up a little bit. It's got a, a little bit of a green hue in here, but honestly, it's not a pretty green. So it's not a color that I'd really blend together. And I think this was one of the colors that I chose to make the mud this week, what I was talking about earlier. So then you have the cerulean blue as it gets, starts to get darker, so the color becomes a little bit richer, to the Mediterranean. Now the blue is starting to lighten up, and it's allowing the green to come through. So it's a little bit better of a blend. It's not horrible. Um, peacock blue actually made like a dark leafy green, and it was actually, I thought this was one of my top picks. And when you see it up close, you'll see. In a working situation, you'll see this was a very good one. Powder blue reminds me of the sky blue, so they're both um, okay with the palette. This one I put as a better blend, and it actually is because it's a little bit more blue than the sky blue light. I didn't like this. This is very muddy and grayed because remember, as you start getting towards here, the colors become a little bit grayer, and gray is just not going to mix in with green. Mm -mm. And we all know why, because I say it all the time, because green is made up of yellow and yellow and gray do not ma match up. They just, they just don't. It's mud. So aquamarine cobalt turquoise. These are some of my top picks. And before we even get into the greens, I loved this combination and I liked this combination very much too. So the aquamarine and your cobalt turquoise are definite yeses. And I would use those two together. Now you're going to start getting into some of the greens. Now I put a check on most of the greens. Except for pale sage and gray green. Because they have a lot of gray in them. So it really there are better choices that you can make. But as you start getting with the yellow chartreuse, I like this yellow chartreuse with this um, artichoke. I thought it was, I, I don't usually like such a harsh blend, but I, I did like that. And then you get into the regular chartreuse, it looks even better. And the lime peel, and then the moss greens, and all of these greens going all the way through, all the way down to your um, marine green, they're all going to blend nicely because it's green. This is, is in the green color. Then you get to the um, Celadon green and the jade and the muted turquoise. These three are definite no-no lists. Do not blend. They were just it, it, way too much gray in it. And the gray and the yellow just reacted and it was awful. And you could see it when you do it up close, what they turned into complete mud. 
and then we got over on the peacock green, it created like a forest green. So I said, mm, it's not going to ruin your picture. There's, there's actual color there, but not the greatest. And I wasn't thrilled that where peacock green is like a jeweled color. Um, and this is not, there is much better choices if you're going to mix or use uh, peacock green. Um, there's much better choices than avocado that you can make. So that's how it kind of reacts with the greens. And the next page, we're going to start getting into the grays. Um, putty, yuck. I don't even know why they have putty in there. I think this is the ugliest color putty. I almost, my putties are all like full pencils. I think from every set I have, I don't think I've ever used up a putty beige in anything that I've, I've ever done. We're getting into the umbers and the umbers are okay. And the browns, even though this has a little bit of green in it, the siennas and the terracotta, and they do have red because they're so earthen they do mix out well together and you will see when you make it yourself it's not a true red red because it is a brown and you are brown is the muddy color it is an attractive blend and you can use this in forest scenes and anything with nature it's okay i left tuscan red open to debate i can argue whether this blends out well it's not something that i would overly use or have chosen really in my pictures but it's not going to kill you if you do it and i did think it was an okay palette now you're getting into your umbers which are starting to give some gray and you're going to be moving into your gray colors as you can see the lighter grays they were okay they didn't they didn't have enough pigment in it to uh, really affect. It just maybe a little bit lightened the avocado. So it's not going to destroy your picture. And I have seen palettes with the lighter grays. And that would be the 10% and the 20%. And that went for the cool and the French. When I started hitting 30% on all the grays, it kind of went the same way. Once it started hitting 30, 30 is not going to destroy your picture, but it's not attractive. And then you have your 50, your 70, and your 90. Stay away from it. Just not attractive. When you got into your French grays, again, the lighter ones were okay with it. I've seen some painting palettes that did have this. Because then again, French gray has green in it. Where cool blue, cool gray has blue, warm gray has green, but not a very attractive mix. And here we have the French, which is made for the green nature colors. And it's got that earthy feel on it. You get away with it for your 10% and your 20%. Starting to go into the 30, 30% French gray mixed with artichoke was not as bad as the 30% on the warm and the cool. 30% on the French gray was not great, but it's not horrible. Just don't use it too much. And then again, we're starting in with your deeper, richer colors. Now, on the blue slate, okay, I gave it a green light, but hesitate, <laughs> okay? It creates a gray color when you mix that. It really, the gray in the blue slate really turned it gray. Um, in a storm cloud over a sea, you might sneak some of that color in. It's not awful. It's got at least a little bit of richness where the other colors just wipe out and are not good. So I gave it two greens with a hesitation. And then of course, white goes fine with it. Silver, metallic. And I'm going to hold off with the, with that. 
I went for the neon. Remember when I said that I like the chartreuse, the um, the chartreuse and the uh, yellow chartreuse? Well, you're going to have the same thing with the neon. I didn't find it awful. And in certain situations, I may even go for this, especially when I'm making like a bronze. And that's why we're going to talk about um, bronze in a minute. And then neon orange, stay away from it. And the pink, stay away from it. Your neons don't blend well. They go good as palettes. They don't go, go good blending in anything into it. So just be a little cautious with that, but it's not awful. And I wanted to talk to you about bronze. And we're going to go back now and talk about a couple of the other um, pencils that you're going to see that work well with this color. I got out a, a scrap. Now, I'm going to blend out. Here is your artichoke. And when you're blending it out, you really can see almost a lime peel in there. I mean, that's kind of one of those. I'm definitely seeing the yellow. I see the green. And almost a lime peel in there where I could almost put that into this lime peel into this group. But I wanted you to take a look at Sandbar Brown. Okay, and then we're going to mix in some bronze. Now this is as a palette. And green okra. Okay, as a palette together, these are beautiful. And if you play with these colors together with some highlights all together blended, you're going to get bronze. This is how, one of the ways that I create the greener tinted bronze. Um, I may add a little bit of yellow depending on how... I, I want to go, but remember, the bronze is a deeper browner gold. So that's really where we're looking at now, where you're going to go into the umbers. And that's what this color palette did pull out. So again, this color palette is green okra, bronze, sandbar, artichoke, and a little bit of light umber. And you can use that in creating a very nice looking palette here. If you go with this palette, it's an earthen, trees, moss, ground. You think of it that way. If you add in a little bit of sienna brown, you're going to get a nice um, bronzy color. Sienna has a little bit of the red, so it's going to brown it up nice. That's one of my palettes for the week. So now what I'm going to do, instead of going into the triplet colors and the multiple blend colors, because I think I'm going to do that much better in the demo video. And I realize I owe you a demo video from last week's uh, color. Sorry, it was not happening. I'm going to show it to you as far how far I got into it. But we're going to talk about now some of my favorite blends so that I can reiterate, pay attention to these combinations. The last part of this is I'm going to review it. This way I can make sure that you check off these specific ones. Now, I didn't write down every one. These are the ones I particularly like and I really need you to take notice of. So if you're not going to do the whole entire palette and put in every blend, these are the blends that I definitely want you to include on your sheet, even if it's by a check mark. For the blends, cream, ginger root, sand, light peach, beige, chestnut, cerulean blue, aquamarine, cobalt, turquoise, chartreuse, lime peel, moss green, light umber, chocolate, Cool Grey 20, 
and sandbar. And my top pick would probably be the chestnut. And for palettes, these don't necessarily mean they blend well together, but they look really good together on a page. Spanish orange, pale vermilion, crimson red, peach, Delilah purple, which makes a terrible blend, but this is a very nice palette. Violet, electric blue, grass green, non-photo blue, dark brown, and bronze. This may also include the color right next to it when they don't make too much of a difference, but I only put one down. So that's my, my top picks. This is what I managed to color this week, feeling completely lousy. I did it underneath the mushroom, and I was trying to make mud, is actually what I created. I don't even know what this color turned out. I erased it before I even thought maybe to keep it. It was awful. So this is as far as I went. This is actually... The very little pieces that I did was actually my week's worth of coloring, which is, for me, is never happens, but I just felt really lousy. I couldn't even get my dress to blend properly. I gave up. I didn't have the strength to actually blend out the colors. So if you're going to look at something not to do, this is an example of what not to do. And I hope you don't, you guys don't mind, but I'd really like to stop doing this picture. I've stopped feeling it. And... So that you guys see, it's okay. If you stop feeling a picture, no matter what you're going to do, you're going you're gonna to make bad choices on it. And I've started making bad choices on this, and I'm just not feeling it. So we're going to put this away and never look at it again. I will start a new picture this week. I promise you. So that's what you get. And that my dear friends, is artichoke. Everything you ever needed to know about the artichoke color, and probably more than you needed to know. So fill out your systems. I hope this helped. If you're interested in getting the system, the link is in the description box below. Make sure you choose the right one for you. Whether you have a printer yourself or you're going out to have it printed, make sure you know because people are still getting confused and I'm going to have to do another video explaining it one more time. But you guys keep on coloring and I will see you at my next video. Take care. Bye-bye.